Welcome to the Gap Street Podcast. Today is episode 32. I'm here with your main co-host, Zay Crypto. Do those ad libs for me. Tired Crypto. Tired Crypto. <laughs> Sleepy Crypto. <laughs> Sleepy Crypto. <laughs> That's got to be one of your mixed names. <laughs> We have two special guests. You've already heard one of their voices. Today we have local Columbus artist Liam Mani and DJ Reem. Say hello. Yo, yo. What's up? <laughs> yo, yo. We got him on today because I, I met Liam Mani uh, at Declassified. Well, met, you know, we talked for like three seconds, but uh, I saw Liam Mani perform on stage and I was like, this is something different and this is something that I have to get on my show, you know, because there are certain people that really need to have more of a platform just because of the energy that they put off. And I think you put off a lot of positive energy in the music that you make and you present yourself with a lot of class and a lot of professionalism. And I've noticed that in your communications and uh, your music and your music videos and everything. And I just think the way you're doing it is the right way to do it. So thank you, thank you. I noticed all that and I was like, yo. <laughs> What's up, man? Yeah. And DJ Reem. I didn't know you were coming on until yesterday. It's all good. It's all good. They brought me here, you know. It's equally about everybody in this room, you know. Sure. It's it's about all all about Columbus. Sure. That's it's the way different. it is, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, I wanted to highlight some of the talent in this room today. For sure. So, I got just a couple. I got a few. Just a couple. I got a long list of questions uh, that we wanted to go over, and uh, hoping we could uh, just do a little discussion around, you know, the the art community in Columbus and. What you uh, what you contribute to it? Word. So, first of all, what kind of music do you create? I know the answer to that, but for the listeners, well, I create hip hop music, hip hop R and B, all that. Uh, but really, I just create myself. It's just my life in in a catchy tune. That's really <laughs> so. Cool. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself then. Uh, Mimi. Um, so. <laughs> I was born in Springfield, Ohio, and then I lived in Columbus since I was like seven, eight. So I've been in Columbus for years, just always liked art, so always liked poetry, um, writing films and drawing, different things like that. Live with my mom, sister, bro. Yeah, just been us against the world, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And on, on a lot of your pages, you say that uh, your upbringing was with a single parent household and two younger half siblings and such. And I imagine that factors a lot into the music that you make. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was hard because my mom had me when she was 16. So hmm. my mom had me young. Um, she happened to be a junior. And then I guess she found out she was pregnant. So she graduated school early. And my mom's birthday is literally like a week after mine. So she had me then turned 17. But yeah, it's just been us like growing up, trying to succeed. It's been very troubling. Like stuff just happens every day <laughs> for no reason, but it makes you stronger. That's awesome. And with this music that you make about your circumstances, what what role would you say that you play in the Columbus community? I would say I really, um, I, I do pride myself on just being a voice and showing a force. So like no matter what, what you're going through, like you still have to seek out your happiness and keep doing what you gotta do. Because if you stay in the dirt, like keep your mind in the dirt, you will always be in the dirt and the dirt ends up being your grave. Mm -hmm. So you gotta get yourself out and just keep on moving, do what you gotta do. And I just want people to see that, see it for me so they can do it for themselves. Well said. I like that. <laughs> and that's what you want people to get out of your music mostly is yeah. to get themselves out of their, their ruts, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Right. That's cool. Um, so who were your biggest musical and personal influences and how have they influenced you? My mom was my biggest influence in life. Like in general, yeah. she's really strong. I don't know how she how she's so <laughs> strong, but she's really strong. And then when it comes to music, I love Queen Latifah. Everybody knows this. I love Queen Latifah, <laughs> and I like her because like she does everything that I like want to do. And it's crazy because my mom looks like Queen Latifah. <laughs> like they have similar looks. You have yeah. To see, I'm trying to tell people, but like Queen Latifah did music. 
she sings. I don't sing, but I can write for a singer. <laughs> but she <laughs> sings. She does film, producing things, like just creating things and also doing things for the community. And that's everything I want to do. And so I looked up to her. I looked up to a lot of artists who did stuff. J. Cole, Love Missy Elliott, like even mm. by just all women in hip hop, I really looked up to as well mm. as like some men. Like I love Ludacris because he was very creative and just wild. And sometimes you will find music of mine that's wild and a little freaky at times too. <laughs> <laughs> so. You want to be like a Renaissance woman? Yes, yeah. yes. That's awesome. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, do you do you know Saw Rock and uh, yes. and Rhapsody and dude? I saw Saw Rock perform live. I've seen her twice now. Uh, she opened for Brother Ali a few years ago when I saw him at a uh, A and R, and then she was one of or close to one of the headliners at a Two by Two Hip Hop Fest this year. Was that the one you go. pointed out to me? What? Was that the one you pointed out to me? Yeah, I think you so. Were like, oh my god. Yeah, she was like dressed like a goddess as usual. Yeah, like, yeah. you know. I was sick. I could not go. I was oh, so sick because I freaking love her. But yeah, I love Rhapsody too. Like Rhapsody is like literally in my top five. Yeah. Especially right now. Like I love her, and she's not too. She's one. <laughs> she be talking that talk, man. Bro, she be spitting that Eve yeah. album was fire. That yeah. was just perfectly made. Yeah, uh, yeah, Star Rock and I think my top female uh, MCs right now. I feel like I have a list here somewhere. I feel like I wrote a list. I do not have it anymore. But uh, like, like we've said, Rhapsody, Star Rock. Um, oh, what's her name from uh, from the Fugees? Uh, Lauren Hill. Yeah, Lauren Hill. She's a big one for me as well. Um, and do you do you feel like you are you are among that rank right now? Is that kind of in which way? Like <laughs> musically, influence wise. I've been told I influence people. It, it's weird, like when people actually like talk to me hmm. about my music or my poetry. They're like, "Oh, this helped me. All oh, this, this, that." And so, but I'm not yet. Okay. I, like once I do what I really want to continue to do, then yeah. But right now I'm working towards it. Okay. Cool. You ain't gotta worry about my loyalty down into the dirt. You can always. What makes you unique as as an artist in Columbus? I know that's a kind of hard question for some people, but. I can't answer that. Yeah. <laughs> for me, for I you? Can't, like I don't know what makes me unique. I'm just me for real. <laughs> yeah, and I think what it is, it's not forced what you like. A lot of times when you hear people's music, you can see that they're trying to force this picture of someone who they want to be or what they're trying to be. But with you, it's just natural. You say it, and oh, yeah. when we see you, whether it be like your post or we see you out, your story, that's literally who you are. You have like the goofy side, the real side, the hoop <laughs> side, all of that all in one. Yeah. And you can hear it in different music. So like you hear those singles and it's like, yep, I can see her be in this type of mood or I can relate to whatever it is. Oh, yeah. It's just real authentic. Yeah. I, I noticed that too in the yeah. way you, in the way you present yourself yeah. everywhere. And that's what it is. Yeah. Like, yeah, the presentation. Super real. Yeah. Yeah, it's never forced. My sister said the same thing when she, as wild. Like one of my older sisters, like I reposted a video and she went back and looked from stuff what she had from way back when. Oh, she's like, far back. She went, <laughs> she I went. still got some stuff on there. Yeah, yeah, she went back. She's like, <laughs> she's like, yeah, she's like, yeah, I, I kept clicking. It's just like she's like, she's like, each year she just gets better and better and better and better. It's just like, wow. I'm just like, really? You saw that? She's like, yeah, I pay attention. I don't tell you all the time, but I'm paying attention. I'm like, okay, I hear you. Yep. Being watched as mm-hmm. well. <laughs> so is that something that led you two to find each other in that professional background or um how it started originally, what was it? The showcases that I was doing, right? Yeah, I did a show for uh, he asked me to do a show for him. Mm-hmm. And then like Reem is just a really nice person. <laughs> like genuinely nice. And and when it comes to men, who do music and stuff they always try something different yeah they'll be like oh yeah i'm trying to do this but then they trying to be romantic with me him he's very respectful and like if i did a nice picture he would be like yeah you did that but he wouldn't be like yeah i'm trying to hit yeah. like that. <laughs> and so he was just like comp- he would compliment me compliment my music hmm. different things every time i saw him it was always good and then i was going through like 
something really bad and he was sending me motivational clips hmm. like morning he was like good morning you know get up da, 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 send me some youtube videos to make me like feel good wow. and i was just like bro this is a partnership that's good. like you care yeah, about yeah. my mental that, that's a real friend yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's what i thought so i had to keep him close <laughs> but you know what's funny i think it started even before that though when you had your video Oh yeah, he was in my Gimme More video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people bailed on me and he was like, Is there anything I could do? And I was like, Yeah. And so now people know. Yeah, <laughs> They're like, Oh, so you got you got a thing for chubby dudes. You got, <laughs> <laughs> you got That was my first thing he was like, like, I mean, I better fall back. I was like, I'm all for it. So it's pretty dope. Yeah, that's yep, yep. he was in the Gimme More. Yeah. Oh. Mm hmm That was a minute ago. Uh, I think that yeah, that was like 2017. I think when I looked on your website, that was cool. Wow. Yeah. And let's talk about your music videos for a second. There are a couple that I wanted to bring up specifically. I mean, all the all the ones that I watched are super well done and professional. Who who did those? Was that? I have um, so I have some like two videos from. Uh, Shawnee G. Okay. He's amazing. <laughs> Shawnee G. And uh, then I have uh, my Gimme Moors from uh, Digital Matter. He's he's amazing as well. Mm. And then most of them are by Kim Vision. And that's my go-to guy. Like, okay. uh, he's very respectful, nice dude, professional, and he gets the job done. So, cool. yeah, he be killing it. Awesome. He was starting out too. So <laughs> it's crazy to see his growth. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I love watching two creative people like get their sea legs like together yeah. at the same time you know or uh in the in the case of run the jewels i have a poster up there in the co top corner there two people that have already gotten their sea legs get together afterward mm -hmm. and create something way even better so i can see that happening in the future too that's awesome um one specific one that i wanted to mention was uh the don't give up video I thought that was really well done. And I thought that was cool. And the the video was shorter than the actual song, right? Was that a thing where Cash's Keys wasn't available for the music video, or was that just a, kind of the plan all along? So what I was going to do with that whole album was I was just doing snippets. Okay. So I was just going to do snippets, and since it had that piece in the beginning, I was going to do that. And then me and Cash's, we was actually supposed to do a video, not at that time. Mm because everybody kept saying like, y'all need a video, I need a video. So we was gonna shoot a video and I had it really planned out, but just not a date. And I don't know what happened, but I start working on a different project. And yeah. once I get my money, support, I'll be like, okay, I'm done with this. But I just had my friend Samaya uh, do a dance piece and basically just showing that, you know, don't give up. Cool. Another music video <laughs> I wanted to mention was the down music video <laughs> because it popped up and I was like, well, I'm doing research. I guess I'll watch this one first because it's, it's the one that was the pop up on the website. <laughs> and that is intense as far <laughs> Yo. like the whole, whole video. I'm like, man, this is a good song. I'm digging this. And then the end starts and I'm like, Wait, hang on, what's happening? As the plot thickens. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, so wh whose idea was that? Was that your... It was really, it was really me and, like, me and Zach, we, um, when he recorded his verse, I was like, I want to do a video, like, for this, and I want it to be, like, really dope. He, and I was, like, like, acting and stuff. He's like, ooh, acting, like, and start talking about it. And then um, the producer, Mo, he even, like, chimed in and was like, oh, you should do something like this. And then I even bounced the idea off for Bream. And so it was probably all four of us. Yeah. And then Kim, he definitely helped out with directing and shooting it with King. But yeah, it was, it was a... I feel like it was a joint. Effort. Oh yeah, it was definitely a group effort with everybody yeah. like just throwing out ideas because we met at the park one day and we were just brainstorming, just listening to the song and thinking like, man, how can we make this catching? And it was just like, let's kidnap him. Let's do something crazy. Like, <laughs> and like people was really good. It's going to catch people off guard, but by the end of it, it'll make all sense what the song is about yeah. and what's going on. So we threw out those ideas and then the day we linked up, we just pieced them together like a puzzle and it just became what it was and it was like I right, I like that right there it fell together in the right yeah, places yeah and this is yeah. like to see something that everybody put together is like yo we did this like <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's the best feeling of the mm -hmm. world that's dope especially when you aren't expecting it exactly like when you're like wow this is 
actually better than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it came out very. It's very just nice. magic. We are uh, greater than the sum of all of our parts. That's yeah. the way the saying bars. goes, I think. So bars. Bars. <laughs> bars. We got bars? We got bars. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you guys know Marty McFly or uh, uh, the Emperor Chaz by any chance? I've mm. heard that name. Yeah, I've heard Marty McFly. I'm just trying to think. I, I'm terrible with names. I have to see faces. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Dude with like a really huge beard. I mean, there are a lot of people here with beards, but uh, that's really the only beard and glasses. He mm -hmm. wears a red hat all the time. But uh, I had him on, I had the two vocalists from Emperor Chaz on uh, episode 23. And the way Marty speaks is so funny all the time. <laughs> Just when he, oh, you got bars? We got bars? Or uh, <laughs> what else was he saying? He's, uh, there, he has so many catchphrases. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. I think the prim and proper was the funniest. Oh my god, dude. My first ever Tiny Desk concert. <laughs> oh man. It was like they were doing this dumb, like, uh, like. It was like meme rap. They're yeah. pretending to be some like posh British boys, like <laughs> like, like British invasion, like <laughs> dumb shit. But it was the I don't know. It's like I'm not all right. I'm not okay. Like yeah. it is. I don't know. But <laughs> that, yeah, that's a, that's funny. a reference to something that I've never listened to. Really? <sighs> there, there's like a type of music. I don't know. It's probably like Brit pop. Brit pop. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm not alright. <laughs> <laughs> British pop and like the London trap. Man, I love the London trap. You listen to grime music? Mm -hmm. Oh what? fuck yeah! Yeah, no. surprise. yeah like it just Dude, randomly came up with my that's title. Great. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I love Corey, it. Corey and you, mm -hmm. there's so few people here that listen to yeah, it. Yeah, it's great. I it just it. goes like, I don't know what it is. It's just. Those beats are hard, man. Mm -hmm. I listen to like one UK rapper. Who do you listen to? Lil Sims. Never heard of him. Oh, it's a girl. Is. Oh, the girl? Yeah. She's fire. Who is that? Yeah, Skepta. Little who? Lil Sims. Sims, S I M S. Uh, Z. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I, believe, I know, yeah, she's definitely British. <laughs> but yeah, yeah she, she's dope. And then, but I listen to like R&B. I love singers. Singers, singers, singers. Cool. Do you know who uh, Dave is? Like just Dave. I think it's just his rap name. Really hard grime artist over there. I gotta see. Yeah. Let me see. Dave. You know Jam Baxter? Yes. Oh man, I love Jam Baxter. <laughs> All right, we're going a little non-Columbus you know for a minute. <laughs> right. to the three bottles of a bleach. Seems like people come While we're on this, do you want to talk about some of your musical influences? Because I'm sure there's tons. Oh yeah. Like famous ones. Famous, not Whoever. famous. Yeah. Okay. And how they factored into the music. Who, who that you really did like pushes you to just do that thing, like to the next Dude. level? Mm -hmm. It's not really people that do music. Yeah, most really. Of the time, like some people are factored into it, but it's like if I do a show, somebody comes up to me, or even just a random person hits me up. And it's mainly, I get a lot of love when we're talking about UK. I get a lot of love in the UK. Really? Like, I get people, cool. this one dude, I've known him for a couple years. Like, we followed each other on Twitter. And he's like, he'll support me and stuff like that and say he really rocks with, with my sound. And then I even just uh, got acquainted with another guy. He DM'd me on IG and he was like, you are amazing, dude. It was like you have a fan in London. I was like, wow, that's so, great. Yeah, um, but when it comes to like music, it's really like I really like um, J Cole mm. a lot for more than just his music, but his impact on people. And I saw him perform, and when I saw it, like he had a lot of passion. And that's, I'm like, that's amazing. Like, it's yeah. not just gimmicks. It's like, he didn't need anything behind him, but just a DJ. And he had us in front of him. Yeah. And like, it was, it was amazing. Him, definitely ring. <laughs> ring Damn, bro. <laughs> like, he definitely, because like, he, he be hitting me up like, what's up? Let, you know, let's get, get the grind going, calling me superstar and stuff like that. I'm like, dang, what? Stop. <laughs> Stop. I love the encouragement. Yeah, so, and, and just like people in general, I can't even say it's just all musical people. Some people do music, some people don't. Um, but, I don't know. 
it's a it's a lot of artists here in Columbus too who will come up to me and talk to me about stuff or be like, yeah, I see you've been working, and I'm like, yeah. Stevie, little old me. <laughs> That's what's crazy about Columbus. It's such a unique city where, like, let's say you go into an environment like New York or L.A., everybody moved there, and they're like, yeah, I'm going to beat everybody else. Yeah. You know, like, I'm going to get to the top, and, you know, uh, and nobody's going to stop me, and uh, I'm going to forget y'all name when I blow up. Like, you know, like, <laughs> don't hit me up when I blow up, you know. Here, it's such a support network. Yeah. And... It's so cool. <laughs> Everybody is always talking to each other, especially at Declassified. That's one yeah. example. Yeah. Shout what, what, out to Sam. Sam Rothstein, yeah. your guy. <laughs> he's, he's definitely a great life factor to the city. Yeah. Sam Rothstein is doing is putting in that work. Uh, we had him on episode Hashtag nineteen. Sam at work. Sam at work. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely dope. You can't forget. Oh well, after this, this will drop after Cloud City has already happened. But uh, go next year, I guess. Right. If you didn't hit it up this year, follow up. Oh man, uh, might be a might be a little a uh, little, little special something from Gab Street next year. At uh, at Cloud City, so uh, you know, be uh, be on the lookout. Uh, yeah. We'll keep you in the loop, you know. Especially if you're on that mailing list, uh, <laughs> you know what next episode's gonna be. If you're on the mailing list, if you're not on the mailing list, you don't know what's coming up. So you really don't have any other option. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, like uh, people like Sam. Uh, really drive this city and it's awesome and uh, I've met a few of his DJs too like Zealous and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, Raiden Labs and all those guys yeah. they're super cool um, and that's why that's why I rep Columbus so hard with this show and such just because it's such a unique place to grow up in musically and uh, the culture around here is thriving and it's it's great I love it yeah, it was wild as before. It wasn't always like that in Columbus. I know when I first started, it was like a bunch of clicks, and I feel like it's mm. clicks now. But people are more open yeah. to like collab with others and yeah. more open to even acknowledging what other people are doing right. within hip hop or just all out, all over the place. Yeah, because you know? before it's just like this is my crew. We over here. We not messing with y'all. Mm. Now it's like okay, even though it's this is my crew, I'm gonna step out and I'm gonna get a feature right. from so and so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing you some praises when I see you. So it's like just to see that growth from what it was before to now. It's just like wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it definitely is. Mm-hmm. You see different producers from different. Yeah. Like labels or collectives mm-hmm. working with others. I think it's great. It's definitely amazing. Yeah. It's on the Ross for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it's gonna stay like that when Columbus is really popping. I think so. Yeah. I think that's what's gonna keep it relevant with more people. Cause I like like you said, people like move away and go to places like that yeah. to be this big superstar, but I see it's a lot I of mean, people. Okay, my bad. Oh no, that's fine. But like, oh. if if we keep this up, like if we keep the community and the, the yeah. vibe, everything alive, then I don't see any reason why you wouldn't go to Columbus. Exactly. But do you think by as a result of that, people will start moving to Columbus I mean, so maybe. they can be like, I'm gonna beat everybody else? Like, maybe. You think like, we'll become one of those? We gotta keep them in check. Yeah, build themselves like a like a stop themselves a market here. Yeah, I can see that, like how Atlanta is. People move to Atlanta, mm-hmm. build that buzz, build that market, and then come back to wherever they're from. I can feel like I can see Columbus becoming like another Atlanta if they just keep pushing and pushing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not ending the night life at two o'clock. Just saying. <laughs> they still have life to about three, to four o'clock. They might not change it, but I just feel because like we're like a business. It's, it's, yeah, we're business like, and family. We're a business and family place like yeah. Ohio especially Columbus yeah. but super also service college oriented. too yeah. yeah I don't know I hope so but we'll see yeah I can see it <laughs> I can see it happening somewhat in yeah. some form or fashion I'm gonna do a bit of a, a topic change but not a, not a 180 per se but mm-hmm. gonna go on a different route here I noticed also on your website that you do spoken word poetry mm-hmm Talk about that a little bit. Um, so I go by Queen Faith. I have so many names. And um, like anytime I'm Queen Faith, I poetry, I write like stories, different things like that. And that's probably if you really want to 
get to know me is really through my poetry. Like my music, I only hit like surface. I don't try to get too deep. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to my poetry, I'm like butt naked in front of these people. That's how I feel. Cause it still makes me nervous to perform my poetry. Yeah. Depending on what the topic is. But yeah. So I just I started writing poetry probably around the same time I started writing like raps I was eight. And so okay. I started cool. doing all that stuff in my notebook. And did it at school. I loved movies anytime they had like poetry type of uh, vibe to it. Loved it. And I just started doing it. And yeah, just grew. Was in high school, did poetry slams, um, was in the poetry club, different things like that. And you talked about uh, being nervous in front of uh, an audience in that kind of setting. I noticed in that the, the one video that you have of your performances that people are yelling like rewind and stuff like that Man. and i've never really gone to i've i've been to that kind of environment only in like uh let's say the chicken and beer festival that happened a few months ago or um independence day festival like over on that genoa park area mm -hmm. and uh what's what are some things that i should know about that poetry atmosphere that are different from a concert atmosphere because I, I i have yet to be more exposed to that kind of that kind of show i guess so when poetry and music they're the same but different yeah. as far as the crowd. Like with poetry, it's, it's just like you're in this space and it's quiet. People are actually truly listening to the words that you're saying mm. versus when it comes to music, like a concert, people are listening to just everything all together. And so it's just like if you go to like a um like a concert as far as like a musical concert with instruments you're listening to all the instruments flow together hmm. when it comes to poetry it's one single it's a solo and so you're like you're literally up there it's quiet people are listening to you and then depending on the setting because some places is different but when it's a lot of black people <laughs> you just be like you're yeah. snapping for like church <laughs> like, okay poet okay like you hear all this stuff yeah. and like with, when it comes to you performing on the stage you have all these noises and you kind of have a cape well not even a cape but like you just have like a hood over yourself yeah because you can hide yourself when you're performing music you can hide yourself in so many ways and mm. and me i try not to hide myself so i don't like to rap over my vocals unless yeah. it's a hook and that's just so I can start talking to the crowd and mm -hmm. you know stuff like that. But people can hide themselves in the beat, in their own other vocals, in a DJ, and different things like that. Versus with poetry, you're ass out, basically, yeah. and they're just like listening to you and whatever you're talking about is it's really I, I, it's deep. So it's just like the layers of you just peeling as they're just watching you listening. And the payoff of doing that well is different from the payoff of doing a concert well, I imagine. Because, like, if you're doing a, like, a slam poetry night and you're really, like, the audience is with you, mm -hmm. they are way more, they're with you ideologically. Whereas with music, they're like, yeah, I fuck with this. Like, you know, this yeah. is, this is, this sounds cool. Yeah. I feel they, it more. Exactly. Yeah. I think what it is, it's a limited distraction. With uh, mm. live performances, you have the music, you have the crowd. There could be somebody talking, but you're still going. Poetry, people will be in the crowd and stop whatever's going on yep. to hear whatever it is you're saying up front. Like, hey, yo, you be quiet. I'm trying to hear what she's saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that delivery is just like, it hits you. It hits you more. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's just a different vibe, a different feeling that you get, like, yeah, they, it's just like, shut up, mm -hmm. listen to them, oh, yeah. versus like, you can listen to anybody's mm -hmm. freaking performance and you'll hear people talking yep. and things, but they be like, oh, they're stage present, that, oh, they're probably dope, probably wasn't even saying a thing, yeah. and you just, oh, yeah, they're pretty they're pretty dope, you have to go home and listen to them, yeah. like, oh, they were dope, I like them, or, uh that had a catchy beat or stuff right, like that. Right. So yeah, poetry. You can't listen to poetry just for the beat. <laughs> yeah. so it ain't there. Yeah, yeah, you have to actually listen to the li to whatever they're saying. And so that's why I get nervous when it comes to poetry because I am more vulnerable with poetry and people are, I can, it's just quiet. And they're looking at me 
and I'm just like, well, <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> this is everything that's talking about my craziness. Bam, right here in front of you. And so, because if the crowd's cold, that's just like, that's like rejecting you, not just yeah. like like, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's nerve wracking. I still get nervous. Like, I've had times where I had to had something to have something in my hand, like a microphone, or if I just wrote the piece and I haven't memorized it, I have it in my hand. And if you, if people can tell, I'm shaking like this. Mm. And then like anytime I get on a stage. I don't shake like that, but like, I know like last time I performed, my legs started shaking a little bit when I was like walking. And that's just because I was just so mm -hmm. amped. Like I get yeah. super amped and, but poetry, I just be like, okay, let's do it. Let's get it. <laughs> and a, a lot of times if you can use that pressure to perform well, and you can you can siphon that into energy within your performance like even with this show obviously we're not in front of like a a live studio audience hopefully eventually uh <laughs> but like, <laughs> um there's this pressure to perform where uh, like i'm able to do better if i am more nervous you know what i mean and coffee helps with that but <laughs> i drink coffee and then the like i feel more physically anxious but it allows me to do my job better mm -hmm. you know somehow and i think that's a skill that everybody can perfect yeah, in, in any pressure. way yeah yeah it's super cool the way that works yeah it's wild but i know exactly what you mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break we are about halfway through coffee break coffee break <laughs> i need more coffee <laughs> we'll be back with more columbus hip-hop talk right after this message Do you like what we do on Gab Street? The best way to support the show is to tell people you know about it, either through social media or word of mouth. Interact with us on social media by way of Instagram at Gab Street Podcast and on Twitter at Gab Street Pod. We now have a Discord server, and the link in our bio on Instagram has a button that acts as an instant Discord invite to it, so if you tap on that, you'll join it immediately. Do you live in Columbus and make music? Please submit your tracks to us at gabstpodcast at gmail.com and we'll feature your music in between topics with your name in the description of the episode if the episode isn't already an interview of another musician. Thank you for listening to the show. It would be impossible to convey to you how much it really means to see your support. Back to the show. I'm sure there's a way you can do it. Yeah. I'm sure there's a way you can do it, but I say that's why I always tell people get to whatever the show is early find the sound guy mm. and do all that stuff there because oh, yeah. you wait till oh, yeah. <laughs> time this is like no I know like yeah I've been, I've been listening to Super Duty Tough Work man mm -hmm. I know how this is going now yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, do, you, do you guys have any uh, show nightmare stories that you want to tell <laughs> on the air <laughs> you know, talk about it. I'm yeah. dirty I don't yeah. care I'm open yeah we definitely can cool <laughs> Let me hear him. Oh, oh you're back. Oh, we're back. Oh, we're back. <laughs> we're catching that natural conversation, we're you know. These motherfuckers. <laughs> I hate nah. this guy and this guy. Man. Oh, we're on the air. Oh, we heard that. Well, you know what, Johnny? You paid me that money. <laughs> God damn it. Bring me my money, God damn it, since you're listening. <laughs> but no, I'll say show nightmares, man. And this is why. Excuse me. I don't like doing like showcases too much. I don't mind like doing like the two by two stuff, mm -hmm. the polish showcases, but those little, yeah, I say the hole in the wall ones, they can take it as disrespect. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> it's the ones where people want to book 10 and 13 acts. You have the venue for maybe three or four hours, but when we get to the venue early, there's no structure. Yeah. There's no sound man, there's no house DJ, there's no communication between who's doing what and what's going on, and it just becomes a shit show. It's a bunch of people, I want to go first, let me go after you, so-and-so's not here yet, I have to wait. So it's just, we've had it to where we got there early for sound check, didn't really get to do a sound check, okay. and there's what? eight people ahead of us and mm. nobody really knows what time they're going stuff is overlapping stuff is changing and we're running back and forth to the promoter like okay so what's going on <laughs> oh go find so and so like no dude this is your show <laughs> you tell me where I need to be and when I need to be there I'm not about to sit here and guess oh do you want to go now like no you tell us when we're going so 
what was it? Was it like in March? Was that show that we had at um Trism? March or April? When was that? Around that time. Huh? Yeah, it was still winter, but getting into spring, we had a show at Trism. Got there early. Tomorrow's and early. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm at always time. early too. I feel that. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, and I just feel like for a show. <laughs> I always get there at least an hour, hour and a half early just to avoid the BS. So we mm-hmm. get there and I'm looking around. I'm like, where's the sound man? Oh, yeah, there's no sound man on duty tonight. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'm like, do they know you guys have iPhones? They're just like, yeah. I'm like, so you didn't think to hire one? Okay, cool. They had yeah, they didn't have, and that's what it was. That venue is expensive. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, can you play the other artists' tracks? No, I may not. <laughs> so we get there. Baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm going to need my coin, fam. I'm doing for my artists, but I'm not doing for nobody else. That's not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we get there, no sound check. I'm like, okay. They give us the order, but then the show, because of whatever little disturbance was before, literally starts an hour behind schedule. <sighs> So the acts are going, and to my understanding, each act was supposed to have what an eight to ten minute set. And there's this one group up there. Ten minutes go by, fifteen minutes go by, and they just, "Hey man, come do your verse on such and such." Like, fam, what? And then what was it? Yeah. So it's coming to the end of the show. Leimani was supposed to go, and there was another guy before. And I'm looking at the time, and I'm like, the show is supposed to end at 15, and this guy's still on. Yeah, 15. Guy got off the stage. He got off. The DJ at the club was setting up. So I'm like, so just fuck our performance. We're just not going. Wow. Oh, no, I can talk to them, get them off real quick, and then you go up. I'm like, nah. We're not even about to do that right now. We're not going to switch in the middle of their EDM night to come back and do hip-hop for like 15 minutes and go. I'm like, yeah, we're done. We're out of here. Whew. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, and myself, I used to put on shows, so I always like try to get stuff in advance. And me, I was always like the house DJ slash host. Um, I would try to tell people like, "Look, I need your songs by this date. Don't come to me with no CD. Don't come to me with a flash drive. Talking about oh, you just did a new song you want to perform? Nah, fam. <laughs> you had all week to get this together. If it ain't together by show date, whatever I have in the Serato is what's getting played." Exactly. So I kind of took a break because it was it was just becoming too stressful and annoying. It was becoming more of a headache than it was something fun. And I know doing events is stressful, but then when you get done, it's supposed to be fun. Those showcases I was doing a couple years ago, bleh, it wasn't. But I will say, you guys did bring up earlier, Ring Fest. Mm. Festival. Yes. I want to hear about that. We used to do in Springfield. Shout out to my boy Reem with a kush click. Bubby's <laughs> Chicken and Waffles. Ironically, another friend that I have named Kareem, I used to do internet radio in college. The Pulse, we were once DPS, but then we became The Pulse over the years. And he would send me music of his, and I would always see him like under like my little hashtag, listening with his people. So I'm like, man, let me invite him to Columbus one day. So he drove up, played his mixtape, did an interview. He's like, man, I'm doing a festival. I'd like you to be one of the DJs. I'm like, what's it called? Ring Fest. I'm like, oh, that's what's up. That's my name too. <laughs> so Ben. So he's like, you can bring some people with you. So I went up to Springfield. And whenever we did it, it was always that Saturday before Father's Day. So we went up to Springfield, and it just started as just like a few local acts. That was still local acts, but it was just like people like on a higher scale. I'd bring maybe like three or four Columbus acts. You'd get people from Springfield, people from Cincinnati. We had some people from North Carolina there. And then just over time, we just build it up. So we would do it as a skate park. And during the event, people would be skating. We have our vendors, our performances, and then there'd be a skate competition. So the last one we did, you I want to skate s- park in mm-hmm. Springfield. Yeah, y'all know that's where I'm from. So I and I was about to say, you never <laughs> seen it? Like a sh- like a little bit off the high. I forget it exactly be, where. It must be on the north side of Springfield. Yep, we it ain't, is. Yeah, I'm from the south side. Yeah, it's we ain't got nothing yep. like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's a skate park, and then the last time we did it. We got rained out, but it happened like right in the middle of us, like loading people to from Columbus and different events. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, I said, I really don't want to cancel this. We've been promoting for the last God knows how long. We had all these people come in. Sir Michael Rocks are the cool kids. 
because the other Reem is good friends with him. I don't know how that happened, but they're real good friends. So he was our um, headliner. So I'm like, yo, dude, we can't have Mikey Rocks out in the rain catching a catching the money. Like, he's like, all right, bro. He's like, I'm gonna call some people around. Still tell people go. So we getting people hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, like, hey man, it's raining. This is still going. I'm like, look, just meet us down there. We'll figure it out. So we somehow <laughs> got access to some bar that was downtown. Nice. Don't know how it happened, but man, shout out to y'all, whoever y'all are. Forget your name, and I'm terribly sorry. They <laughs> opened their bar up early for us, and I like literally screenshot the flyer, and we didn't even do no new official flyer. I literally just wrote like you know how <laughs> you can do the marker. <laughs> <laughs> I did a little marker with the bar address. I said, meet us there. So all these people loading up. I'm upstairs, sweating, moving speakers around, just getting it together. So we started maybe two hours behind schedule, but it was cool because the bar was like, hey, look, y'all can have it. They didn't even charge us to use this area. They was like, look, wow. you can have it for free. Here's the access to the speakers. Here's the mics. Did the show. Coming towards the ending, I was having some technical difficulties with my laptop. I'm like, damn, Mikey's not here yet, and he has to close the show out. I can't have my shit fuck up for Mikey Rocks. It's Mikey Rocks, fam. So, did a quick little restart, and I'm just talking to the people on the mic. And when I say that crowd was full from like the top level to the bottom level to people outside, I saw my old barber. I like used to come out here and here. He was like, yeah, bro, I saw you promoting my hometown. I'm like, what? You're from here? I didn't even know that. He was there, a whole bunch of people. And here comes Mikey. He came, was emailing me his songs, did, and we just rocked the night away from like, I say from like four in the afternoon to maybe like one that night to like the speakers exploded. Damn it. <laughs> but yeah, this is just a festival. But in a nutshell, Rings Fest is basically a festival that me and another friend of mine put together to just mess the different cultures, the different cities. And I don't like to just label it as just local because a lot of the people that we have perform are like on that upper level where it's just like they get that right look. Mm -hmm. They can take it to that quote unquote celebrity. So I don't like to mm -hmm. just label it local. I don't know. That's just that's just my preference. I say up and come, whatever it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we just use like the our favorites and bring them on board with us. And the plan is 2020. We're going to bring it back. I'm not sure if we're going to do it in Columbus or we're going to do it in Springfield again. But we definitely going to kick it up a notch because we took a break the last two summers. So Hell yeah. the streets need it. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. So you've done Green Fest. Mm -hmm. Talk about the Pulse Radio. Woo, the Pulse Radio. <laughs> it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. <laughs> That was during the time when I was in college. I was in massage therapy school. Hmm. And I don't know if anybody knows Des Arnez or DJ Duro, Rich Nice. Those are a few, like, like I call them the old heads, the OGs. And I'd always be on Twitter. I'd follow them and I'd always see like little hashtags, Pulse Radio and whatever little show they're on. And I would just chime in like throughout the week, listen on the phone. And then one day, Daryl had got on air and said he needed an intern for like somebody to help him with like stuff in the studio. And I always had like an interest in music. Like as a kid, I used to dub little cassette tapes off of the radio and stuff like that. I always had an interest in it, but never like had the opportunity to get into it. So is that kind of the beginning of? Yeah, your, that's okay. really where it started. Cool. So like whenever I go to the studio, I'd either get there early and just mess with like the little something like the turntable or I'd stay back late. I'd say like I lock up a studio and just stay back there just messing with stuff just learning how it works and then from there I was the engineer slash intern I would sign people in do drops and then I think after like a year the guy who was in charge of it Rich he was like man you didn't put in your work now it's time for you to you know what I'm saying do your thing spread your wings get you a little show so I would the messed up part is <laughs> I was still in school so I would pre-record Thursday nights after the big shows, I'd be there from like 12 to like 2 in the morning pre-recording my show. So I'd like drop songs and like, oh, shout out to so-and-so and so-and-so. So this is such and such. This is like during when Zach and James 
were going by TGIF. This mm-hmm. before they were mouth. This was TGIF. So they were like some of the main people I used to push on the show. So I'd act as if I was doing the show live, but I was really pre-recording it. So Friday when I'm in class, I would like have my headphones in <laughs> and tweet like, "Oh, coming up is this, this, and this," <laughs> and then have people just engaged on the timeline. And then eventually, I finished that little program, and I was able to do it live and just do it more. Get people I had Corey Parks, Yo, Zach and James. Shout out Corey Parks. Yeah, wherever the hell you at, man. <laughs> Show your face. Uh Ness Verge, rest in peace. Yeah. Ness used to come through for the Cypher Week. Um, my man Sean Bands, Lima. Um Damn. I really gotta think. I used to up trig. I used to have trig. No, Twan. Yeah. Twan used to have dreads. <laughs> Twan wraps the money up. <laughs> yep. Um, I just have all the people like who are like I respected and like their craft that I appreciated come through. And shout out my man Jamal from Mouth because he was one of my main supporters when I first got started. Yo, like he really used to like put people on and really like keep me going with that. And then That's eventually. Awesome. The station came to an end. The old heads mm-hmm. stopped coming to the station. And the words that I was told were, we didn't see the benefit of it. And I'm just thinking, you're not going to see the benefit because you're not here actively. So yeah. that ended, which I've been debating on getting back into radio, whether it be like on an underground scale or mainstream scale. It's still something I've been contemplating. I have a passion for it, but just other things going on now yeah. take away my time. So I just roll what's working, what's consistent for me. So... That's pretty much that. Well, some, what, something I can say is that you know how to talk. So, and <laughs> Thank you. You know how to talk very well. So I would recommend that you get back into radio. Yeah, man, I mean, this <laughs> For sure. It, I can feel it coming soon. I just don't know how soon, but it's, it's definitely an itch that's there I need to handle up on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. I'd be excited for that. Appreciate it, yeah. man. Hit me up if you if you end up doing that. Oh, for sure. Sense. I definitely will, man. Yeah. Trust me. We're going to be in contact when this festival gets back rolling. Hell yeah. Trust me. Sweet. Yeah. So you've also said mm-hmm. on your website yeah. that you have shared the stage with some notable people yeah. whose names I currently forget. It's all good. But you know what? Let me pull up the website right now. Yeah, go ahead. Now, if I remember correctly, yes. So, what, what's the website again? DJReamsDope.com. So let's see. I opened up... For big crit, big crit, yeah. Ty dollar sign, Damn. yeah. Uh, Stally, mm-hmm. man. And Caskey. The crazy part about it is Caskey. Yeah. Don't ever talk about him. What's crazy <laughs> is him. that big crit show. Caskey, I feel like almost Cassie. made me hate like big crit. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, and <laughs> ironically, that's when I DJ for Corey Parks. Some of his music is good. <laughs> Oh my bad. Sorry, we're like having two conversations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why did you? Why did oh, it make you hate DJ? Or, uh, I almost Big hated Crit. Big Crit for it, and it was mainly his management, his tour manager. What it was, the show was poorly promoted. So they had five openers from Columbus selling tickets. And I guess the ticket sales weren't going that much. And I think it was like on a weird night. It might have been like on a Wednesday or Thursday. And we got to the venue. It wasn't like as crowded as they wanted it to be for showtime. So the dude was like, look, man, if we don't get X and Y, Z amount of people, all you openers is getting cut. They were only going to let Corey go and one other guy go. And Corey was like, damn, like we all were doing the same thing, all selling tickets, all promoting like crazy. I can't Mm -hmm. just take the full 30 for myself before Crick goes. So I was like, all right, this is what we're going to do. I'm like, everybody, send me one song you want to perform. And we just go and do this 30 minutes. Everybody just hop on the stage. I'm a point. You run up and do your thing. Because the promoter, the president is just like, look, you either guys figure this out or y'all got to go. So I got on the mic. I was like, hey, the people backstage told us all of us couldn't perform. But you know what I say? I say, fuck that. <laughs> all of us who have been promoting all this week, all of us is going to go. So I start calling everybody one by one. One dude came up, did his piece, ran off stage. Another dude came up, ran up, ran off stage, did his thing. Corey did his thing. Corey did his performance. He got done. And then I grabbed the mic and I just started talking shit because I was just so upset that they tried to play everybody. I'm like, man, and fuck you, Janky Promoters. Fuck that manager for trying to end this. It's not our fault they can't promote. And I'm out. Dropped the mic. Grabbed my laptop. Grabbed my bag. And just started running. It's like, oh, no, you got to go. You 
gotta go. <laughs> yeah, that shit right there. <laughs> you are hot. Yeah, I, I'm a wild boy, man. I done just, <laughs> I'm not even gonna hold you. I'm a wild boy, yo. I done did some crazy shit for the culture, yo. <laughs> but yeah, you gotta you gotta make that sacrifice, and that's what I realized, yo. Man, gotta make that sacrifice. If I saw that shit live, I'd be like, "That's the best show." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this dude found me at the bar. And he's like, "Damn, yeah, bro, I just love what you did out there." I'm like, "I had to do what I had to do, yo." It's basically like a uh, like a military coup at a concert. Mm-hmm. That's kind of dope. like yeah, like it was just wild. Like the way it was just happening, I'm just like, we really about to do this. I'm like, yo, yeah. I said, yo, we all staying here and doing what we plan to do. It might be shorter, yeah. but we gonna get this off one way or another. But we gonna get this off. Absolutely. Yeah. It's fucked up though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it I'm is. To play them all like that. Yeah, like it's fam. Like it's your poor promotion. Like it's not our fault. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had a situation like that, Leomani, where you uh, you had to shorten a performance because of overhead issues or anything like that? No. Uh, been pretty lucky that way. We've been nipping a lot of stuff in the butt lately. We've been. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. As soon as they start just showing that they can't be professional mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. they're talking about something that wasn't discussed prior, then I just pull out of the show. <laughs> That's smart. That's smart. It's yeah. not worth the headache and it's not worth a sour look on the brand, dude. Like, mm-hmm. I, cause I'm, I'm just tired of being that angry dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I get angry if I have to, but I just don't want to constantly be that. Like, man, I don't always want to cuss out these promoters. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Known as the hot head. Yeah. You just want to avoid it all together. Exactly. Yeah. And this is like, it's the way to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you want to go into a different atmosphere, different uh, platform, you have to take care of the local shows now so that you can be mm-hmm. ready for the more professional ones yep. and it's a lot of local shows that are very professional it just depends on the team behind it yeah true that yeah I know the matter. But does it matter when those brains splatter? Got one last question for the last 10 minutes or so here. We're about at 50 minutes. Can you believe it? Um, <laughs> it's a fast episode. Um, what are both of you into outside of music? Mm. You want to go first? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually, I cook a lot. Yeah? Yeah, I love cool. I went to, um, in high school, I went to the Career Center for Culinary Arts. I did get kicked out of the school, but we're not going to discuss that. <laughs> um, I was very, I wouldn't say I was bad. People just don't like honesty with me. <laughs> I've always been an honest person. I know what you mean. <laughs> but I love cooking. I love cooking. I draw a lot. Okay, and So cool. I'm trying to get into painting. Drawing and painting is two separate things. So, but they I, are. I draw yeah. all the time. <laughs> for sure. And like, I love acting and, and just writing in general. So I want to start getting films. But I literally watch movies I do like fun stuff with my friends and stuff like that but mainly you find me cooking drawing listen to music cool yeah quick plug uh, we're gonna do hopefully around this December January um, a series of episodes called movie gab where we'll be watching local films uh, sets of short films single feature films doing 10 20 minute segments on there so if you like movies feel free to contact me to be on those episodes. I would love yeah, to have that happen. That would like be awesome. That. Yeah. I like acting too. Like when I was younger, I used to do plays for the church, mm. but I was always getting typecasted as the thug oh. because of, I know I talk a certain way with my hands. And another thing is I'm from New York. I don't know if anybody realizes I'm from the Bronx. So just having that accent and I guess that demeanor, quote unquote, I was always getting typecast. That's <laughs> like the tough guy. Man, you see, I'm a teddy bear for real. I'm not even going to lie. I could, I could turn up if I need to, but I'm a teddy bear in real life. So my mom would get pissed and my sister would get pissed. And they were like, look, until they give you a better role that doesn't involve you killing somebody or doing something bad, you need to take a break. Yeah, look, at the church. <laughs> Listen, we ain't about to go there right now. That's a whole nother. I was in my high school play. Whole nother beast right there. Was this in Columbus? Or yeah, it was in Columbus. Columbus? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I say for me, hobby wise, these past couple of years, I've gotten to a lot in fitness and sports. In high school, I played baseball my freshman and sophomore year. I took a break because of some BS. But now as an adult, I play a bunch of sports now. I play basketball for the church league. I'm in a flag football league. 
and now I randomly play soccer with coworkers. That's great. Soccer is great. I don't really like sports, but I like soccer. Yeah, soccer is fun. I didn't think I would like it, but I love playing soccer. Like, it takes a lot of out me, but I just feel like it's just a new challenge for myself. So, those are my things. And air and air cooking, you know, throw a little something in the air fryer here and there, but I definitely say, like, air fryer. <laughs> yeah, so do I. But I definitely say fitness. I say definitely like working out and my like fitness and sports has become a thing for me that I didn't think, but I'm glad it did. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any, any other interests you want to bring up other than I'm that? Start painting but, shoes. Yeah. Hell yeah. I dig that. That'd be dope. Yeah. yeah. I've been looking around Columbus mm-hmm. for months now. Like, I'll do Google searches mostly, but um, so I haven't really done any of the groundwork. But uh, I'm trying to find a Columbus shoe manufacturer. And they aren't here. Yeah, there's none. I don't think there's any here. They're not fucking here. And I want to wear Columbus shoes. Yeah. I'm a very local person, as Word. you might be able to tell. Uh, but like, what? That's an opportunity right there. Yeah. 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 Maybe I should just start my own one. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. You might be the first because I've looked too, and I'm just yeah. like, mm, I really haven't seen anything here. I'm like, yeah. another thing I was looking for jeans. Are there mm-hmm. anybody mm-hmm. in Columbus who makes jeans? Maybe, maybe not. And I, I know that's random, but yeah. no, that's really something I've been looking for for like yeah. the last couple of years. That's real though, yeah. I don't, I don't think I've seen it either. Yeah. Yo, pull up to declassify with those Gab kicks. <laughs> <laughs> Gab Street shoes, man. <laughs> fucking tacky ass green, fucking street sign shoes, man. I don't That'd know. Fly. <laughs> <laughs> you need to make some sweaters, man. I'd wear that on the crew night. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Shit, man. Yeah. We gotta make gas shoes sweaters, yeah, man. Make some sweaters and some t-shirts. You I'll make some gas shoes. You know what? I've got, I've got some ideas. I yeah. might be doing something. I was I was talking about some a t-shirt. Yeah? A t-shirt, yeah. Mm-hmm. Here's my goal. Yeah. Here's what I want to do with the show. I want to make it so that everybody in Columbus, if they see a street sign, they think of my show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And they're fucking street signs mm. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah. yeah, there's a gap street. There's a gap street. Yeah. yeah. And another <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm starting my own shoe brand. What, what do you say about that, Zay? Yeah. Yeah? Let's start a fucking shoe brand, man. Gap Street Shoes. Let's do it. Gap Street Let's Shoes. Let's do it live. You're walking on Gap Street with the shoes, man. Yeah. It's a pedestrian. It's foot traffic, streets. man. That's actually... That's ill. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, shit, man. Yeah, it'll, it'll probably just start with one of those fucking, like, like uh, cro- uh, uh, the charms for Crocs or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just go up from I'll there. Yo my, niece, yo, my niece spent $200 on Croc accessories. What? What? Yo, yo. she told me. I said, <laughs> she said, hey, don't tell mom, but you know. <laughs> don't tell mom. I said, are you freaking crazy? She's like, uncle, but look at it. It's so cute. I'm like, get that out of my face. <laughs> $200. $200. Yeah, they be talking about dropping cash on these mobile games, man. Mm-hmm. Croc accessories are the real I'm telling like, you, yo. psychological yeah. assaulter, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Damn, Croc that's crazy. Nah. I have never heard of that. Are they like they solid fucking Croc. gold? Yeah. No, this is just like pins and like whatever little cool shit. Like, <laughs> and Amaya, sorry, I dimed you up, fam. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Can't be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Everything else is safe, but the damn shoes is outrageous. <laughs> Unless you try to get on me because I buy shoes, and that's what I was just like, well, Uncle, you spend such and such shoes. I'm like, all right, but still, it's accessories that you're buying. I'm actually buying new shoes that I can lace and run. Like, you just looking cute taking pictures. I'm like, no. You bought jewelry for your shoes. Yeah. Right, Don't give the show a low rating because we're cause, yeah, like because we're dissing you. Keep the five stars, you know what I'm saying? It's all love. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, is there anything else you guys want to bring up? Anything? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any last uh, any last shout outs? Anything like that? Man, I shout out my parents. Yeah, that's y'all a made, good shout out to me. Yeah, y'all shout out my parents. Y'all did y'all thing when y'all made y'all sixth child, yo. Um, <laughs> my mom's not gonna listen. She always gets nervous with any of my things. She like, I can't watch it. She just like send it to her friends. Like, look, there go money. <laughs> oh, like when you perform, give me more. Her face. Remember at the listening party. Uh, you didn't see her face. Nah, I didn't see oh her face. man, her face was priceless. <laughs> Woo. I'm weak now. Yeah. I know. Um, my cousins. When I was in Atlanta, my dad lives in Atlanta, and they uh, wanted to see my video. 
uh, and then we went on Give Me More. And my dad was like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he already heard he's, I said, yeah, sorry, this, song, this song's a little freaky. And he was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then we just walked out. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what's that next one you say? What's the next tune? Like, <laughs> my, uh, my grandmother listened to this show. Really? Actually, avid fan. And what? shout out my grandmother. She's one of the most wonderful. She is the most wonderful person in shout my entire girl. life. Yeah. But I did an episode with Joseph Keith and <laughs> we mentioned in that episode we're like oh man she listens like this guy do you guys know him by any chance mm-hmm. he like is colorful language dude he is the raunchiest person in this fucking city his, uh, his alias is pussy boy so yeah that's what he just, I'm yeah. weak yeah. yeah pussy boy Joseph Keith <laughs> Yo, <laughs> you know so, what? <laughs> I told my parents and my grandmother, I'm like, yo, I don't know if you should check this one out. Just like, skip, skip that episode. Yeah, yeah, just go on to episode 30. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be like that. Hell yeah, yo. Yeah. Oh, I'm man. Not to come off. <laughs> so I guess I gotta when when I when I get those live show deals I should probably uh, yeah. choose my guests wisely. Disclaimer: Like, hey man, clean it up. Welcome back to Gap Street. We're talking about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> sex, drugs, and hip hop, man. You think I'm talking about rock and roll? Yeah, here? sex, drugs, and hip hop. Huh. But rock and roll just comes off that that comes off the tongue. Yeah, I know. Sex, it's... drugs, and rock and roll. I had a, I had she bears on here a little bit ago, yeah. but. Yeah, they're they're music? like they're they they call themselves slacker like, pop. So slacker, like that's not rock music. No, it's like not indie. really. It's indie music. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah. So, how can people find you too, on the internet? Go for it. In person. <laughs> whatever. You can go. You can ah. You can go to my <laughs> website. It's www dot. It's three, three, three dubs. I don't know if I'm saying them all. It's leomani.com. So L I Y A H M O N I. And then, like, you can just search me anywhere. It'll show up everything that I have my YouTube, SoundCloud. I'm on Instagram, Twitter. And I noticed on Google when you search your name, it comes up with, like, the whole, like, Wikipedia, like, profile thing on the side. And this is like Leomani artist. Whoa. And I'm like, oh, How do you shit. Get that? This is professional. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I think it was just when I started putting my music up. No, it's not a Wikipedia. It's just like it like comes Google. up in that style. It's like yeah. the Google. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Music thing. I need yeah, that. Yeah. I need yeah. that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go and check my ad words. Yeah, I need, I need to do it purposely, yeah. but uh, who do I got to talk to for that? <laughs> just when I start putting my music out, and then uh, even when my because I had my website for years. I've had a website for years. Yeah. A lot of people don't have one, but mm. I'm like, it's, it's definitely good to have one or, or oh, just yeah. something that where people can come and see everything because especially my Twitter and Instagram, it's not Leomani mm. huh? because somebody has stolen it. Damn, but I'm that girl zoomed. keeps ignoring me, yo, and I keep asking her, like, yo. It's fine because I'm going to handle like, it. Yo, <laughs> We're going to handle it. Yeah. But until everything can be at Leomani, uh, I just, my website, you can find everything. Oh yeah. What what about you? Man, I'm DJ Reams Dope everywhere. D J R Double E M S D O P E. But when you see me, just call me Reem or Cut Reem. That S is silent. Cause I've met people and they call me Reams. And I'm just like, fam, it's just one of me. That's all it is. Just Reams. Just call me Reem, man, you know? Reams. See me on the streets. Going. You know what I mean? Keep it flowing. <laughs> Shout out to Reams. Like, who? Who is this? Put the S on there when you see him. Silencio. <laughs> but yeah, I'm DJ Reams though everywhere, I believe. Yeah. I think you are. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you so much for, for coming on us, today. This was fun. That was a great time. Yeah, this brought back memories, yo. Yeah. Getting some gab sessions done. Word. Sweet. Ha <laughs> ha, get it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you're on the mailing list, you know what's next week. If you're not on the mailing list, you don't know what the fuck's coming up. So you got to get on that mailing list. You can get on there by going on the Instagram page, tapping that link tree link. It's at the very first top, it's the top one. It just says mailing list. You can enter your email in there. It's only one email a week, so don't freak out. I'm not one of those people. So I won't be sending you like tons and tons of shit every day. It's uh, going straight to spam. So if I am going straight to your spam, I take that right here. I take that to very offense. Uh, But (laughs) I take it to the heart. I take it right to the heart. But 
Thank you for coming on this week. We will catch you pedestrians next week. See you later. You have any last, uh, Gage used to have these taglines that he would throw at the end yeah, of the episode. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk about, like, incest porn or whatever, but, like... <laughs> 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 um, Alright. <laughs>